That is the sound there, if you could hear it, of a sonic boom in and around Washington, D.C. and Virginia yesterday. U.S. officials say the explosive sound was caused by military jets scrambling to intercept an unresponsive small plane at hypersonic levels. The aircraft reportedly crashed into a mountainous terrain in Virginia after following what officials called the, quote, strange flight path. No survivors were found. The National Transportation Safety Board and Federal Aviation Administration are jointly investigating the incident. We can... Uh, get to the crash scene and still do this live shot because cell service there is really spotty. And then you, the, you have to hike to get to the scene, which of course is sealed off by law enforcement. But that's the kind of terrain that the NTSB is having to navigate as it looks into this crash. And we just learned that the NTSB, its lead investigator is here and has said that they expect to be here on scene for the next three to four days, which is really uh, standard uh, for the NTSB as it investigates crashes like this. And, and the primary goal is to recover uh, pieces of the plane that can give them a better sense of, first, why the pilot was unresponsive, the people on board unresponsive, but also why the plane yesterday took the path that it took ending up here. And one way they can do that is finding the plane's black box, which of course, if you've uh, listened to reporting about plane crashes before, these planes, most of them have black boxes, especially the commercial jets. Now this one, it was not required to have a black box, but what the NTSB is hoping is that it had a black box that was installed at some point. There's no guarantee that it has one, but they're going to be looking for that today, as well as some of the other pieces of the plane that could point to the avionics and, and why the pilot and the, the plane behaved as it did in its final moments. Six F-16s from three different air bases on the East Coast. Uh, certainly, uh, uh, Joint Base Andrews was one of those three uh, launched uh, la launched into the air. Six F-16s, three air bases launched uh, to intercept this particular Cessna cit citation. As I understand it, the the two from Andrews were the first ones to reach the Cessna, and they had to they had to turn on the speed to get to them, which is why people here in the district. Uh, area heard a sonic boom. The, they had to break the sound barrier to get up the speed to get to get to the uh, to the aircraft in question. about how rare is an incident of the nature in which the military jets are deployed at hypersonic levels to stop a plane from flying over uh, in the U.S.? Well, it is something that law enforcement and the military is trained to do. When you're, when you're talking about restricted airspace over D.C., there's a reason for that, obviously. Mm -hmm. You have Capitol Hill, you have the White House, you have the Pentagon. 
And of course, in the wake of 9-11, efforts were uh, made to reinforce the procedures in terms of scrambling fighter jets. And, and so while it does happen, it doesn't happen a lot. And that's why you had a lot of people yesterday who were looking around trying to figure out what that boom was. And frankly, I was one of them. Uh, so it, it happens, but it is rare that it happens. And so on a day like today, after something like that, there are a lot of questions about whether it worked effectively. And obviously it'll take some, some days to get to the bottom of that. But what you cannot lose sight of is the fact that there, there was a family yeah. on this plane. There was a, a woman and a, a child and a nanny and the pilot. And so you have this family grieving right now or these families grieving while the NTSB conducts this investigation.